Welcome, I'm Jared and I'm going to be demonstrating the use of the Motive Insight EEG headset at home in helping anxiety and overwhelming emotions. I want to point your attention to the contact quality map. I'm pushing these sensors in towards my head and I'm hoping to get all fours on that contact quality map because if I have less than a four, it means that I don't have good connection on that sensor. Before I started recording, I took a Q-tip dipped in saline solution and I wiped all my sensors. So now I have good connection and nice live readings from my brain. Now, I'm not claiming that this replaces help from a mental health professional. I'm not a doctor or a psychologist or a psychiatrist or a therapist, but I'm sharing my personal perspective and my experience in helping my wife. At one point, she was driving two hours to go to the closest therapist who used EEG. And after just a few weeks, it got to be too much for her. So I bought an Insight headset and I wrote this program so that she could keep using EEG. But we found a therapist that was closer who didn't use EEG. So my point is that we continued to get help in that way also. I'm sharing my experience in hopes that it's helpful to you, but I'm in no way undermining any other type of treatment. In fact, we're using other types of treatment. We decided to not only use EEG, but also another device called the Fisher-Wallace Stimulator. Now, I don't want anyone out there to say, well, Jared's saying that I should be using the Fisher-Wallace Stimulator and also EEG. No, I'm just telling you that that's what we decided to do. But I know a lot of you out there don't know what EEG is all about and how it works, so I'm giving you this information. But I recommend that you consult a professional, do research, and make your own informed decision. It's also worth noting that in some locations, you may be able to find a professional close by who uses EEG in order to help you. So the readings that you see here on the screen, we have alpha and high beta, and you might be thinking, I don't know what any of this is. Well, don't worry, I'll explain it to you right now. Brain waves have frequencies, and according to the frequency, we put them into categories. So I have these categories of brain waves here to the right, listed along with their respective frequency ranges. We have gamma, high beta, low beta, alpha, theta, and delta. And delta is not included with the Insight headset because delta readings are primarily of interest when someone's sleeping. And we use this device on people who are awake. So for the rest of this video, we won't be talking about delta, but we will be talking about the rest of these frequency ranges and what it tells us about what's going on in our brain. So let's start with alpha and beta. If you're really focusing on something or concentrating, you might have a decision to make, or maybe you have some stress building up to help you to stay focused on something that you need to finish. In this case, it is appropriate to have elevated beta and to have low alpha. However, if you're finished with that, you're done, you're taking a break. And when I say you're taking a break, I acknowledge that your brain is always doing things subconsciously in the background but you're taking a break. So it's important that your brain has the ability to reverse this and actually have the high beta come down because high beta is particularly associated with stress. And also we're going to look for that alpha to go up a little bit. Now this being said, sometimes we have a hard time with this T7 sensor making good connection. And the reason is, it is right in the middle of the hair, whereas a lot of these other sensors are actually directly on the skin. Plus, that sensor is under the body of the emotive. So we can't add more saline solution to it without taking the whole headset off. However, if we don't have good connection on that T7 sensor, and we're dealing with anxiety, we really don't have to be too concerned about that. And the reason is that the left side of our brain, where that sensor is, is the logical side of our brain. And so if the beta goes up on the left side of our brain and the alpha goes down, 
we don't have to be concerned about that. Really, it's that right side of the brain because the left side of the brain might start analyzing something and it's the logical side of our brain. So that's what it does. But we really do want to make sure that with the beta, that that high beta comes down on the right side of the brain. So I'm going to show you a little bit later how we can ignore sensors if we want to, if we want to ignore the sensors on the left side of our brain. But first I want to talk about the rest of these frequency bands. So gamma, what about gamma? If you're thinking that because gamma is numerically close to high beta, that it would be similar and we wouldn't want to have much of that when we were taking a break, you'd be correct. Gamma is associated with the fight or flight response. And that's definitely something that you don't want to have going on while you're taking a break. Now, not that gamma is bad. Gamma is associated with some good things too. Gamma is associated with intelligence or even self-sacrifice. So elevated gamma or high beta for that matter can be caused by a number of things. But if you're taking a break and there's no reason to believe that you're performing an act of self-sacrifice or that you're intellectualizing, then it's a safe bet, especially if you're an anxious person, that your elevated gamma or high beta means that your fight or flight response is going haywire. And this is why we want to try to get these numbers to decrease. So our gamma and high beta frequencies, any frequency higher than 18, we're going to punish the brain for having those type of frequencies. Now, when I say punish the brain, I'm not talking about severe punishment, but what we're going to do is turn the sound off and dim the screen on a movie that the user's watching. So it's not severe punishment, but just to make it easier for me to explain, I'm going to be using the terms punishment and also rewarding because in that alpha frequency range between 8 and 12 hertz, we're going to reward the brain for having activity in that area. And then in that low beta frequency band between 12 and 18 hertz, that's our neutral middle ground so that we're not splitting hairs we're not going to reward or punish the brain for that area. So how about theta? Well, if you're thinking that since theta is numerically close to alpha, then it would be a good thing to have, you're partially correct. Theta does have some similarities to alpha, but the advantage that alpha has over theta is that alpha has an awareness of the present. Now I know I'm going to have to explain that. See, some people are able to just zone everything out and really relax and go into a theta state. And that's a good thing. But others are in high theta all the time. And this is noticed particularly in these front two sensors. The theta will be really high and it makes it hard for them to pay attention. And this could be frustrating if you have a hard time paying attention. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that if you put the headset on and you find that you have high theta, I'm not saying this means you're unintelligent. All of us that have that high theta pretty much all the time, we, I think, just figure out other ways of working around this. But it can be frustrating if you have a hard time paying attention. So for me, theta isn't something that I wanna force to be higher. And theta is one that if you really don't know how to be able to control these brain waves and are very experienced at that, you can get into trouble with not being able to pay attention. So for that reason, theta for me is another neutral area that I don't reward or punish the brain for. I hope you see how alpha really is unique. It's the only one that we definitely want to see elevated when we're taking a break. Now, as far as high beta is concerned, the good thing is that we can work with someone who has a problem with stress in order to get this high beta readings to decrease. How would we go about doing that? In order to answer that question, I wanted to compare the Insight headset to an elliptical. 
And the first comparison I want to make is that they both cost about the same amount of money. The second comparison that I wanted to make is that they both give numerical readings. If you think about the numerical readings that an elliptical gives you, you can look at those readings and it's a quantitative way of making a determination of whether you have improvement to make in your physical fitness. And you could continue to exercise with that elliptical and you could set goals and you could make that improvement and you could watch your numbers improve. And although with an elliptical, there are ways of going about making this improvement with your physical fitness without actually looking at the numbers. Sure, this is still a good illustration of what we're doing with the Insight headset. With the Insight headset, we're looking at these numbers. We're identifying areas where improvement can be made. And then we're setting goals and continuing to exercise with the Insight headset. And we're going to make that improvement and watch the numbers improve. The third comparison that I make between the elliptical that I happen to own and the Insight headset is that they both have Bluetooth that's able to communicate with the computer that can reward the user for doing the exercise the correct way. So if you look at the software right here, what this does is that if the targets that are set in the program are met by the brain, it's going to reward the brain by allowing the sound to be on and allowing the screen to be brighter while the user is watching a movie. So imagine if someone's on an elliptical and they're running the same program and they stop exercising as vigorously as they should be exercising. Well, the program's going to shut the sound off on them with that movie and it's going to dim the screen. So this would motivate the user to exercise more vigorously. However, it is a little different because with the elliptical, the user is still making a conscious choice to either exert himself more or exert himself less. Whereas with the Insight headset, there's no conscious choice being made. It's like there's a direct link to the subconscious because it's subconscious brainwave activities that are controlling the volume and the brightness. So if the brain wants to see the screen brighter and hear the sound, it's just going to figure out how to hit these targets that are set up in the program. So now I'll get into the specifics of this program and how we actually set these targets. So if you look at the right side of the screen, this is our average power in the alpha frequency band. And we have readings for five of the sensors. So there's five readings there. And we have the label AF3, AF4, T7. That specifies which sensor that reading is for. And if you want to know where that sensor is located, just look at the contact quality map. And that diagram shows you where that sensor is located on the head. And then on the bottom of the screen, we have our five readings, one for each sensor, for our high beta frequency band. So these are the two frequency bands that we're working with by default, alpha and high beta. And if we want to adjust one of the targets, we can just move this slider. There's a slider under each one of these readings where you can set the target. So I'm going to turn that AF3 target down to zero. And I'm also going to turn the T7 target down to zero because I'm starting to ignore the sensors on the left side of my head like I talked about earlier. So the reason why turning the target all the way down to zero ignores it for the alpha is because with alpha, the goal is for our reading to be higher than the target. Now with beta, the high beta, the goal is for our reading to be lower than the set target. So I'm going to turn for T7 and AF3, I'm going to turn the targets all the way up to 500 as high as it would go. And I could set these targets anywhere in between, anywhere I want to set them, I can adjust these targets. So next I want to show you 
how we can access other frequency bands besides just the alpha and the high beta. And we do that by clicking on the user defined band. So on the top of the screen, we have our user defined band selection where we can select the function of our user defined band. And we can select what the user defined band is, and then we could select whether we want to try to increase or decrease that particular band. So theta, obviously for me, it would be good to decrease theta because if you look at my theta readings, a lot of times they're significantly high. And like I said, I found ways to work around it, but my difficulty paying attention, the high theta readings is responsible for that. Let's move over then to gamma. And like we talked about earlier, most of the time we would want to decrease gamma. And if you look at my gamma readings, just like my high beta readings, they're also low. So I'm not having a problem with that. I'm not stressed out. I'm not in fight or flight. So my gamma is good. So we could also look at low beta if we wanted to, and we could either try to increase it or decrease it. And I am actually going to show you another feature of this program, and it is the relaxation mode. The relaxation mode in this program uses a number that the Emotive Insight gives you, and that's the performance metric relaxation value. And that's just one value that is calculated by Emotive as far as how relaxed you are. And our slider is set to 50, so I'll just leave it set there. And so right now what it's doing is if the relaxation value that Emotive calculates goes above 50, then it's going to reward me for that. So you'll notice if I actually relax, which I'm going to do now, I'm going to stop talking and just relax, that my high beta value should go even lower and you'll see that my relaxation score will go up and the program will start rewarding me. So let's watch it. Notice the circled alpha reading from the top of my head. You'll see an increase in this reading after my relaxation score increases. I'm doing a voiceover here because I can relax better if I'm not explaining things. Also notice that my beta values have already decreased since I stopped explaining things. When my relaxation score exceeds the target of 50 set in the program, the screen gets brighter, but you won't be able to see that because of the screen recording software. But you will notice the sound turning on. You may have noticed that besides the change in the volume and the brightness, when my brain meets the target set in the program, there's boxes that fill in and reveal a disclaimer one box at a time. The entire disclaimer is displayed when the program is first opened up. The reason for the boxes filling in is that when I first wrote this program, I had it reveal a picture one box at a time. And the idea was that the brain would want to see the whole picture, and so it would try to meet the target set in the program so it would reveal the rest of the picture. Then when the whole picture was revealed, it would start over with another picture and reveal that picture one block at a time. But then when I decided to actually use the volume and the brightness while the user is watching a movie, I left this programming in here, but I took the pictures out. So now you still see the blocks filling in, but now all you see is this disclaimer instead of the pictures. The movie that I'm using now that you see here on the screen is a parody video on our channel called When I Watch YouTube. You can check it out on our channel in its entirety. Thanks for watching. And if you found this video informative, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, please leave a comment. I'll see you in my next video.